Let's have Rachel speaking on the psalm series this morning, so I'm super excited about that. Um, we just want to ask that the Lord would speak through you and anoint your words, so I'm going to pray for you if that's okay. Brilliant. Father, thank you so much for Rachel. We thank you for her gift, for her ability. Thank you that she knows you as Father and that you have, um, you have brought her into your family. She's a child of God and rejoices in that. And we pray, God, from that place this morning as she speaks that you would anoint her, that you would speak through her. We thank you for the psalm that she's going to be uh, speaking from this morning. We pray, God, that it would do us good. We pray, God, that we would get Jesus through. We pray, God, that we'd be encouraged and strengthened in our faith as Rachel speaks. So bless her, we pray. Fill her with your spirit. Help her to hear from you, God, that she will be able to impart what this psalm means and the heart behind it for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, it's so great to see you all this morning. Wonderful. Um, and it's thinking about being sunny, I think. So hopefully, by the end of this, we'll have some summer. Um, so, carrying on with our psalm series, you'll be thankful to know we're not doing every psalm, but we're doing different types of psalms. So we've looked at some introductory psalms. Esther spoke on... A uh, psalm about reliance, Psalm 23, which is an epic psalm, isn't it? Um, last week. I'm going to be looking at an orientation psalm, so we'll go into that. And a little bit of a sneak preview. We're going to be looking at psalms about lament, psalms about killing your enemies, psalms about thanksgiving and confession, and psalms about adoration and praise. So that's what's kind of coming up in the in the series. So I'm going to read to you, we're going to look at Psalm 24. Mm. So, thank you, Texas. <laughs> right, it says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea, and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does, does not lift up his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the faith of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, for the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. So, how good is that? So you will be probably not surprised to hear the talk's called, Who is this King of glory? Um, which is like, it's so good, isn't it? Um, a good, good choice. <laughs> well done, David. <laughs> so, we're looking at, this is an orientation psalm. So, an orientation psalm means a psalm that helps us to refocus and remember who God is. Remembering that he is a God that is worthy of our worship. And helping us to reorientate our, our lives around him. And when I think of orientation, I think of... The solar system, that's what kind of came, came to mind. And how the plan, planets orientate themselves around the sun. They, they have their orbits that, that go around the sun. And that is their, the source of light and heat. And it is the source of, it's how we have life on this planet. We need, we need that sun to kind of to keep going. And actually, I learned in school. If the Earth shifts at all from that orbit, if it gets a little bit too close, we kind of get really, really hot, 
And if it goes a little bit too far away, we get really, really cold. So actually, that orbit is really important. And so how much more important for us as Christians to orientate our lives around the giver of life? the creator of the universe. And that's why like this, this psalm and other passages in the Bible, it's so important to remind us ourselves who God is, why we worship him, why we choose to orientate ourselves around him. So we're good. it does the psalm does that in kind of three ways is what I kind of like saw when I was what came out to me when I was reading it. The first one well, the question is, who is this King of Glory? So number one, he is the one who everything belongs to. Number two, he is the one who enables us to live life to the full. And number three, he is the one who has won the eternal victory. So, number one, the one who everything belongs to. So let me just read that passage for us again. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. So all of the world is his. Everything and everyone who dwell in it is his. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Now, when we look at the world, we can see kingdoms and we can see empires, can't we? And that's kind of a weak image of kind of people having authority or ownership of some kind over different areas of the world. But actually, those empires, they're fragile and they're finite. They will not last forever. They will rise and they will fall. And I was thinking about, like, even in the strictest regime. So we're going to talk about North Korea. And North Korea is number one on Open Doors' world watch list. So Open Doors, you'll have heard from Dan, is a charity that um, looks at kind of helping persecuted Christians live out being Christians where they are. And actually, in North Korea, it's really, 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 really difficult because the regime is so oppressive. The ruler there wants to control how people think, what people do, everything about their lives. And um, I was watching stuff about, about um, North Korea on the Open Doors website, and it was saying how, actually, the, the parents, they can't even tell their children about Jesus. How counterintuitive is that as a Christian? They have to keep it secret because they're worried that they might go and tell their teacher, like really naturally, tell their friends, tell their neighbour, which is super dangerous. That means that if the authorities find out, which is the culture there, that you would tell the authorities if you found something like that out, the parent will go to prison, to a labour camp, something worse would happen to them, they'd be taken away from their child. So there's this crazy like dynamic where they can't even talk to their children until they get older about Jesus. So how incredible, actually, that people are coming to know Jesus. It says it's estimated that 400,000 people in North Korea know Jesus, who are all walking with Jesus. So actually, even there, where the ruler thinks that he has control, he really pushes down everything he can think of to stop people coming to know God. People are still knowing God. Because actually, he isn't the ruler of the heavens and the earth. He hasn't got authority over everything that lives in it. God does. Um, and there's such a lovely story that I feel like really kind of, kind of encapsulates this, this authority God has over the world. And that is um, Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. It talks about um, Jesus calming the storm. And it says, one day, Jesus, he, so Jesus, got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out and as they sailed, he fell asleep and a windstorm came down on the lake and they were filling with water and were in danger. It wasn't good. And they went and woke him saying, master, master, we are perishing. And he awoke 
and he rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased. And there was a calm. And he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even winds and water, and they obey him? So who is this king of glory? He is the one who everything belongs to. Everything on earth, every person on earth. So, second of all, the one who enables us to live life to the full. So let me just read that, that passage again. So, um, verses 3 to 6, it says, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Now, there's two things going on in this passage. Number one, we have a king who tells us how to live a good life. We have a, a king who tells us how to be pure, to, to look to him, to live honourable lives, to, live, to know what is right and wrong, what is trustworthy, and what is, what is deceitful, what is bad. But we don't just have a, a king that tells us what to do, tells us how to live life to the full. We have a king that enables us to live life to the full because he is the God of our salvation. So how cool is that? And actually, in this world, often we can think, actually, to live a full and brilliant and wonderful life, we just need to look after ourselves. We need to look to ourselves. That is how you live life to the full. But the Bible actually says completely the opposite. It says, if you want to live life to the full, don't look inside, look to God. Because that is where your salvation comes from. That's where blessing comes from. That if you, if you seek God and um, you accept him into your life, then you will be able to stand in his presence and know his blessing. And actually, um, I really love this um, testimony um, by Shane Taylor, his, his story. And it's on the Alpha course, if anyone's ever done the Alpha course. And if you've not, I would really advise you watching a little video of his testimony because he speaks so beautifully. I, I cry every time because he's just so, so wonderful. Um, but what happened was that he was living a life where um, he was um, in a gang and um, he killed some people. He, he was stealing, he was in a, like a really bad place, he was doing really bad things, and he went to prison. And then in prison, he like attacked a security guard, I think he went killed a security guard, he got put, got put in isolation, he got moved around the prisons, he was really bad news, no one wanted anything to do with him. He was like really, really, like, not in a, a good place. And, you know what, by God's grace, um, miraculously, he ended up on an alpha course, which, thinking about his testimony, feels unlikely, but he obviously did. He ended up on an alpha course, and God met with him, and his life was transformed, it was turned around, and his behaviour completely changed, to the point that he was released from prison, and actually, he ended up going back to the prison where he stabbed someone, to do an alpha course. Like, how, how wonderful is God? And um, what really got me in this story, to be excited, but he has like, he has children now and a, a wife, and he was saying like, it really gets him like, if I had been that, that man before I came to know Jesus, and I'd had children, I am just so sad about what my life would have, what their life would have been like. Because now they have a dad, who reads the Bible with them on a night time and takes them to church. And um, yeah, and he does that because he knows how to love his children now, because he is loved by his Heavenly Father. He knows what it is to be in his presence. He knows what it is to know his blessings. Uh, so 
Our second one, who is this King of Glory? The one who enables us to live life to the full. Then, third of all, the one who has won the eternal victory. So these are our last, last passages. I'll just read them again for us. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, and the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. So I don't know what image this kind of conjures up for you. Maybe it is an image like this one on the screen. This kind of mighty warrior coming to storm the gates, to sort everyone out. Um, but, and this passage kind of points to the Messiah coming and entering the ancient gates, which I'm reliably informed by Tom and other commentaries are, <laughs> that's my joke, <laughs> the gates of Jerusalem. So there's this kind of expectation that this king will come, this warrior will come in armour with an army, and it says here the Lord of hosts, so it's not just like the, the army won't just be people, it will be like angels, it will be epic. And he'll come and he will overthrow um, those who are ruling there and he'll establish his rule there and it will be perfect. But when Jesus does enter the ancient gates, the picture is very different. Um, so we have instead, you're very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a, a man who's entering on a donkey. There's no armour. There's no army. And actually, the battle cries are cries of worship. How beautiful is that? And actually, there's such a wonderful moment as Jesus enters in to, the, to these gates, enters into Jerusalem. Um, and it's in Luke chapter 19, verse 37. It says, The whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if, they, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. So don't be deceived by this picture. Jesus is entering into a battle. He's entering into a battle with eternal consequences, which is extremely significant that even creation is aware of its significance. <coughs> and it's a battle where ultimately he will defeat death. And he will do that by dying on a cross and taking on the sin of the world and then rising again on the third day so that we <coughs> might enter into a relationship with him, that we might know him eternally. So, who is this king of glory? He is the one who has won the eternal victory. So there's this kind of, this, um, this idea, this, this orientating ourselves around God, remembering who he is. Personally, I found that really, really helpful in my own life. And actually, what really um, started me thinking about it quite a few years ago was Pete Gregg's prayer course. So if you've not watched it, I, I thought it was really good. It really, really helped me. And he talks about the importance of spending time remembering who God is, 
just every day, if you can, just remembering who God is, whatever's going on, even if things are really difficult or if things are really good, because it's very easy to be like, I'm doing very well. Do you know, remembering that God is so much bigger and greater and more wonderful than the situation that you're in. And actually, he also says, as part of that, to, to yield to him each day. To kind of, what that kind of means is like, say, Lord, I give my life to you. I, I want to do what you want me to do. I trust you with, with my life. Please can I follow you. So this kind of idea of remembering who he is and that response of re, recommitting our life to him. And this, this psalm, it helps us to do that. It helps us to orientate ourselves on God. It helps us to remember why we worship this God, this King of glory. It reminds us that he is the one who everything belongs to. Us to. It reminds us that he is the one who enables us to live life to the full. And it reminds us that he is the one who has won the eternal victory. So, I don't know about you, but for me, that is a king who is worthy of orientating our lives around. So, um, I'm just going to invite Dave Patrick, if that's okay, and we'll just, just take a moment and, and, and pray. And it'd be great if you want to stand up that would be great, but feel free to stay seated if you'd like. Um, Lord, we just, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are the Lord of heaven and earth. We thank you that we can trust you, that you are, uh, that you are the, the God who is worthy of us orientating our lives around, of, of, that, of being the center of everything we do, Lord Jesus. And we just pray, Lord, as we, as we go out this week, that we will remember who you are in any situation that we are in, Lord. Thank you, Lord.